My life's a story before me And I'll try and find a way to be free finally I'll reach the new world Tomorrow brings a new game It's time to learn the pain is gain Ready, fight! Hey guys, what's going on? It's your boy Bowser Jr. Fan 13, and welcome back to yet another Marvel vs. Capcom 4 discussion video. In today's video, we got like just a little bit to talk about, so let's get started. Okay, so we're going to be going over character reworks. So, what is a character rework? It's basically where you take one of the original characters that's probably, like, already been in this game and basically, like, redo them. Basically, like, make giving them new moves or adding some new stuff to them to make them a little more interesting. Like, I'm not saying that the character's moves were garbage or bad. I'm just saying, like... We're just, like, improving the characters, so that way they'd be more fun and more interesting for other players. Especially players, like, who don't play the characters. It'll be, in, like, a nice twist, and maybe it'll br bring them up the tier list. So, anyways, we'll be going over a few characters from each, uh, series and each of the, uh, companies, and deciding who needs a re-break, or rework. Okay, so the first character that I'm going to be talking about is Ryu. Ryu definitely needs a rework because when I was looking at the tier list for all the Marvel vs. Capcom games, I've been noticing that most of the games have Ryu at bottom tier, and I'm like, really? Why is Ryu that low tier in the games? I mean, at least he's not roll tier. Uh, anyways, um... But still, how come? I mean, Ryu is one of the best Street Fighter characters of all time. I don't understand how he would be low tier in uh, any of the games, but anyways, that's besides the point. I think the way we could change him up, maybe we could bring back an old mechanic from the first game. If you remember back in Marvel vs. Capcom 1, Ryu had this uh, ability where he could change different forms and different modes, like he could turn into Ken, or Akuma or Evil Ryu, which is pretty neat. So I want to bring that back for Ryu. And for his modes, it will be the Satsui no Hado mode, where he could turn into Evil Ryu. And yeah. And the other mode will be the Power of Nothingness. I'm going to get into that uh, in a little while. Because, alright, listen. Alright, so his level 3 super, he can't use it as normal Ryu. But he will use it as Evil Ryu and the Power of Nothingness Ryu. So anyways, for Evil Ryu, his um, his level 3 would be the Raging Demon, which is too obvious. Um, as for the Power of Nothingness Ryu, his level 3 would be the Shin Shoryuken, or a more purified Shin Shoryuken. And, like, listen, I think the Power of Nothingness would be awesome for Ryu's mechanics, because if you think about it, We've been hearing a lot about this whole power of nothingness. Like, we've been seeing it in cutscenes and some of the games and the movies. Yet, we never actually get to play as Ryu using the power of nothingness. Not counting as level 3 super from MVC Infinite. Uh, but anyways, using the power of nothingness Ryu for the first time would be such an honor. And the way he could work different, differently, uh, power of nothing Ryu can like focus more on defense and speed while evil evil ryu is more with uh attack and speed so basically take your pick and after you use the level three supers or if the meter runs out ryu immediately reverts back to normal ryu so yeah mega man it's about time Mega Man made his return in this series, and I think he definitely needs a new rework. And we're gonna be upgrading him to the recent Mega Man 11 Mega Man. That's right, he's gonna have all the weapons that he had from Mega Man 11. He will have the Pile Driver, the Bounce Ball, Acid Barrier, Blazing Torch, Block Dropper, you name it. Um, he'll still have his old Hyper Combos, Hyper... Hyper Mega Man, Rush Drill, and Beat Plane. And, um, of course, uh, one of the 
new mechanics that he's got to have is the double gear system. So the way it could work is that Mega Man, like depending on which uh, inputs you use, he could uh, activate power gear to boost his power or speed gear to boost his speed. Um, and the way the charge shots would work would be differently depending on which, uh, which uh, gear he activates. With the speed gear, it takes less time for him to use his charge shot attacks, and they move a lot faster, too. Power gear, on the other hand, it not only enhances his uh, Robot Master weapons, but it also allows him to use the double charge shot. Or, if he activates double gear, which he can only access if he's at critical health, then he will use the big, massive, powerful charge shot, just like in the game. Of course, there is consequences to this. You can't use it, uh, like, all the time, and you can't deactivate it. Because once the meter goes down, you have to, like, wait for it to cool down in order to reuse it. And if you, uh, like, finish using double gear, it will restrict you from using the charge shot attack. Just like how it was in Mega Man 11. And for his new level 3 super, I'm thinking he should, um, uh, basically just spam a bunch of different, uh, power gear variations of his weapons and then it will end with him using the chain blast to surround his opponents with the bombs and then Mega Man will activate the bombs to explode using the double gear charge shot. It'll look pretty amazing, believe me, and I think this would be the best Mega Man in the series. Dante. Oh my goodness, Dante is without a doubt the best Marvel vs. Capcom character. On the Capcom side to be precise, but overall he is just the best. And I have another way on how to make him even better. So we've been using Devil May Cry 3 Dante for the past two games, and I think it's about time we change that. And I think you all know where I'm going with this because if you can tell by the image uh, on the screen, we are using Devil May Cry 5 Dante. Yes, this Dante is going to be the Devil May Cry 5 Dante, which means he'll not only have that cool uh, Sin Devil Trigger form with the uh, wings and stuff, but he'll have like some of those new abilities that he picked up. And I would love to see him use his new motorcycle chainsaw thing. Like, seriously, that was so legit. I think that should be a hyper combo. Of course, since Dante is not only going to be getting a rework of his DMC5 variation, we're going to do the same thing for Virgil, which means Virgil is going to be his DMC5 variation. He will also have his Sin Devil Trigger form and some brand new abilities that he's picked up in that game. So, yeah. Monster Hunter. Now, there's not much to change with Monster Hunter. I think her gameplay is fine. But if there's one thing I want to change, her level 3 hyper combo, because I want it to be a little more than just her swinging her sword around and doing a bunch of weird crazy attacks. I mean, the game is called Monster Hunter and you got all these monsters. And if I do remember correctly, can you fight alongside the monsters? I don't remember. But here's what I do know. How about for her level 3 hyper combo, she could somehow summon Rathalos to come in and attack her opponents. Which of course would make sense because she is wearing the Rathalos armor. Amingo. This happy little cactus character definitely needs a new rework. Now, I have no idea what type of new moves Amingo will have, but if it was up to me, I'd say give him like more new plant-based attacks. Like, um, I don't know, like maybe give him like a Venus flytrap with like spikes all over it for his level 3 hyper combo, or some, maybe he could uh, do like some type of weird uh, dance with his, um, with his different cactus species friends. And it could be a little wild and crazy and funky and cool. Because Amingo is like a rather silly yet fun character to play as. So I want to go with something like really creative for the dude. Spider-Man. Yeah, we definitely need to upgrade Spider-Man. I'm not saying that his moves were garbage. I mean, I love playing Spider-Man in the games. But like, let's give him some new moves. Like give him a little bit more to make him a little special. 
All right, like maybe like for some of his mechanics, we could probably give him like, I don't know, maybe how about like some of those gadgets that he had in the Spider-Man uh, games like from the PS4 or all those uh, cool games where Spider-Man had like those crazy gadgets. Like I think you guys who play the game, you all know what I'm talking about. That should be like brought into his move set and like maybe he could use some of this to like to his advantage. And I don't know if it's just me, but maybe he could also have maybe some different suits. Like, what, you mean like the Iron Spider? Well, not really, because Iron Spider, I'm thinking to use that one as an alternate costume. Uh, but I guess maybe if I could, we could bring in the like, uh, what, maybe the symbiote Spider-Man skin? Like for like some type of uh, super or some type of special like transformation that Spider-Man could have. It'd be a little creative and a little more, like, something new. Uh, anyways, uh, and for his level 3, it's gonna have to be a little different since Green Goblin is now a playable character, and Green Goblin was his level 3 super in the last game. So, for his level 3 super, how about it could be, and I know this is gonna sound a little bit, like, creative, yet a little lazy for this, how about Into the Spider-Verse? And this is where it goes down, like, have Spider-Man, like, throw his opponents into a big web where they can't escape, and then all of the opponents, like, they get attacked by Spider-Man, Miles Morales, Spider-Gwen, the anime giant robot with the girl Spider-Man, the Japanese Spider-Man, or something like that, then the, uh, weird, crazy, emo, nor, uh, old uh black and gray spider-man and yes of course we have to bring in spider ham because why not heck maybe you can e even bring in like the 90s or the like other different versions of the comic book spider-man like into like this whole mix-up like just to be a little more creative and a little more flashy and then maybe like after the opponent is covered in all the webs like the webs will start like loosening and then they'll fall down um, and be in extreme pain and have all the Spider-Mans posing together with one big picture like yeah we just beat up a bad guy like think about it it would be sounding like pretty cool Hulk oh boy man Hulk definitely needs a rework now he doesn't need too many changes but Man, they need to change his level 3 super fast, because the one in the last game, it was terrible. It was just him smacking the ground, and that's it. Like, come on, this is the Incredible Hulk we are talking about. Like, maybe give him something cool, like, from the comics, because if I remember correctly, or from what I heard, didn't Hulk, like, have one of those other different cool forms of himself, or, like, these different variations of Hulk, like, I'm not sure what it was, but I think you all know what I'm talking about, like, maybe Hulk could come in in his new form from the comics, and he could, like, straight up mess up the opponent with that. I'm not sure what I was gonna be going with this, but bear with me. Wolverine! Wolverine definitely needs a rework, and I think I know exactly what to do. Even though, like, uh, I find it weird that in MVC2 that they put two different Wolverines and literally the only difference was just their claws and, what, their supers or something? Because it's just the same character and that's just a little lazy to be honest. But here's where I'm going with this. How about for Wolverine, not only will he have his old moves from his, from his, from the, uh, other games that he was featured in, but how about giving him the supers and other crazy mix-ups that the Bone Claw Wolverine had? But of course this is the Amaranth Claw Wolverine, don't forget about that. And maybe we could give him like a new mode where he has his like, you know how Wolverine has those crazy rage modes that boost his powers and stats? We could give him something exactly like that. And I think maybe we could also give him a little cool uh, counter mix-up that just boosts his power. Like, the more he gets hit with these counter mix-ups, the more his uh, strength boosts up. Deadpool. Oh boy, another level 3 super that needs to be changed. 
I love Deadpool's level 3 super in MVC3. It was funny and hilarious, but I hated the way that you need to set it up. Because I've been trying to activate his level 3 super in the game, and it was hard because Deadpool keep on doing that weird lovey-dovey walking thing with the hearts flying around him. But that's when I found out you have to have your opponents hit you in order for it to work. Why do you have to wait until your opponents hit you just to do the hyper combo? That's lazy, and that's such a waste of an attack, and I don't even know how that's going to work, because isn't that kind of predictable? Like, if you see Deadpool with the hearts, I mean, everybody who's played the game is going to know that they're not going to use the hyper combo, and they're not going to let Deadpool do that, because that's such a waste of an attack. No, that's not how Deadpool should set up his level 3 hyper combo. Instead, how about maybe Deadpool could like, I don't know, maybe uh, do a little cheap shot or funny stuff like maybe flick his opponents in the face or how about just slash him with uh, the sword a couple of times and maybe do a little funny jester and then whack him and then and then they do the awesome level 3 hyper combo uh, that was an MVC3. Because I didn't like the way it was set up uh, in uh, the game, so this is going to be a much better version of it. Black Panther. Okay, yeah, I think it's pretty obvious Black Panther definitely needs a rework. The King of Wakanda deserves better than what he got in Infinite, because in that game, he was just a Wolverine clone. Are you serious? You're just gonna give him Wolverine's moves, even though you should have put Wolverine in the first place? Alright, all right, but I won't get into too many details with that. Black Panther, okay, he might still have the same moves as he did from the last game, but let's give him a little more. I mean, think about it. He's the king of Wakanda, right? So that basically means, like, not only does he have his own kingdom, but he has all of his faithful subjects and mighty warriors that he has with all these crazy technology. And, of course, he's got his different suits. Maybe he could probably change his suits and for his uh, special attacks, he could probably have that one, uh, that one suit with the vibranium powers that launches his opponents away. It'd be pretty creative. And he could also summon some of his subjects to help him in battle and like probably attack for him or defend him. And maybe for one of his hyper combos, we could have him call upon his ancestors to give him strength. To boost his attack, his defense, his speed, his stamina, or whatever. Like, trust me, I think this is like a much creative, more effective version of Black Panther that'll definitely work for gameplay standards. And last but not least, the one character that definitely deserves a rework, Thanos. The Mad Titan needs something extremely new like first off i want to talk about his level 3 hyper combo because in the last game his level 3 hyper combo was just him punching his opponents and they explode that's it punching your opponents and then exploding this is the mad titan he was super threatening in infinity war and end game and you're just gonna give him something like that even in the comics he's more threatening like why? Okay, but in all seriousness, here's how I would change him. How about, like, for some of the people who do actually like Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite, how about give him, like, a new, um, uh, mode, like, a new mode changer, like, kind of like the characters with the transformations. Like, how about give him Gauntlet mode? I think this one is basically going to be where he has the Infinity Gauntlet and he has all six Infinity Stones at his power. And the Infinity Stones are going to function the same way as they did in the last game. The Reality Stone is going to shoot a projectile. The Soul Stone is going to help uh, steal some HP. Uh, the Mind Stone will paralyze your opponent by grabbing them and then leaving them on the ground, which would of course leave them open. And then, of course, the Time Stone will be used for teleporting safely away from upcoming attacks or projectiles that will be coming your way. The Space Stone will be used to drag your opponents towards you, and the Power Stone will be a knockback. So, yeah, it'll work exactly like that, except you won't have the Infinity Surges. And unlike, um, with the Infinity Stones, 
he's only going to be using them with the Infinity Gauntlet for a short amount of time. Like, I'd say probably, like, he only has, like, what, 25 seconds in order to use it, and then after that, it's gone. And, of course, with in, uh, Infinity Gauntlet mode, it also gives him access to his brand new level 3 super, where basically he could have his, uh, a, like, maybe his minions come in and stab the opponents and pin them down. And then as he's walking up to his opponent, he would hold up the Infinity Gauntlet and he would say, I am inevitable. Snap his finger and wipe you out of his existence. Doesn't that sound pretty cool? Trust me, I know it does sound pretty cool and it will totally work. Alright, so that's it for character reworks. I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, next episode, we're going to be talking about uh, the characters, like the brand new characters, of course, and what their moveset is going to be like. So anyways, you all know the drill. Like, comment, share, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace out, everyone.